The immigration debate of this decade has been focused primarily on illegal immigration and what to do about illegal immigration. And that focus is understandable, but the fact that policymakers and the public debate are focused so much on the question of illegal immigration obscures that there are many, many other points of entry in the immigration system that are in need of reform as well. And there are several examples of that. And, and I do think that the ability to garner the political will to address these other problems is somewhat dependent on coming to an acceptable resolution to the illegal immigration question. So it's not as if these are independent reform questions, but it's also important to keep in mind the these other instances in which we, we need to address what has become an outdated, outmoded system. One example would be our inability to keep up with our need for high-skilled immigration. So in addition to having very obvious and strong needs at the bottom end of the labor market with unskilled labor, we also have lots of needs at the high end of the labor market, particularly when it comes to scientists and engineers. And um, Bill Gates made headlines when he testified before Congress in 2006 about the need to have more visas open to people from other countries who had the requisite skills, otherwise he'd be forced to move his operations to Canada. So it's it's a question and part of competitiveness. So that, that issue does not get the level of attention that it probably deserves given its relationship to our economic needs and to our economic competitiveness. Another example would be um, the system of adjudicating immigration there's been a lot of high profile scrutiny by courts of appeals, judges in particular, and as a result by the media on the way these cases get adjudicated, on the inadequate decisions that get written or are not written for um, in these removal proceedings, and also the lack of political independence that a lot of the immigration judges who are housed in the Department of Justice appear to have. And so there's a lot of movement to try to reform that system to improve the quality of the judging which again goes to the issue of public confidence, but also um, fair enforcement of the immigration laws. And the reform would come about primarily by improving the political independence of the immigration judges and professionalizing the operation by separating them from political control. They're primarily responsible for adjudicating cases that have, in some instances, life or death consequences, if not extraordinarily serious consequences, because these are removal cases where people who are lawful permanent residents in the United States are in danger of losing their right to remain and, and may, be, um, may be taken away from or forced away from families who include U.S. citizen spouses or U.S. citizen children. Another example of an area of the system that is in desperate need of reform is in the way that we allocate the numbers of visas that are available. So as it stands, we have a somewhat sclerotic uh, system for, us, for our allocating visas in that it's very difficult to change the numbers of visas that are available. You need Congress to change those numbers. But the numbers of visas that are appropriate in any given year depend a lot on what the labor market looks like. It depend, they depend a lot on what the other pressures for immigration are that are sometimes out of the control of the United States that may have something to do with factors that are prevalent in Mexico or in a country where there's a, a war and therefore a refugee population. And the inability to change those numbers to respond flexibly to differing needs given the point in time that we're facing makes it very difficult to administer a system that doesn't wind up having what we have now, which is a serious problem with backlogs. The existence of illegal immigration is in some measure caused by the fact that there are many people waiting in line in the legal system who have to wait three, five, and from some countries, 10 years to actually get in. And because their need to come to the United States is imminent, either for economic or family reasons, sometimes they bypass that system. And that, again, erodes public confidence in the system, and it erodes the government's ability to use the immigration system to address the, the needs that it's supposed to address, including the demands of the labor market. And so I think that the, the key to addressing all of those things is having the political will to do that, and that political will will come in part from addressing what is of foremost concern to, to most people, and that's the problem of illegal immigration.